Motor Speedway after four years of neglect during World War II. At the same time as plans were being formulated to bring the Brickyard back to life, the racing career of a young Oregonian was also about to get the green flag. Well, five decades later, the final checkered has yet to fall. On September 16, 1945, 17-year-old Herschel McGriff stepped into a race car for the first time at Portland Speedway. On Saturday, almost 50 years to the day, Herschel will again be at Portland Racing, just like he always has. In between, well, there's just no one who can tell the stories like Herschel can. Well, my dad was a minister, so, uh, you know, of course, I had the numbers painted on the car. You know, we didn't have sponsors in them days. And so my dad and my mother both went to the first race. And uh, he had another old pickup that he drove out there because I had to go out, you know, a little bit ahead of him. But, uh, of course, the, of, of all the cars, it was a dirt track. It was dusty and dirty and so forth. Uh, he seen all these cars go in the corner, the first corner, and he went into the grandstand and started praying. He never seen any of the rest of the race. My mom did set up in the grandstand until it was over. Uh, that's been the last time that either one of them went to a race. Well, the Pan American Road Race, of course, was advertised, and it was, to, it was to celebrate the opening of the Pan American Highway. Now, it was 2,178 miles, but about 250 miles at the end was unfinished. It was unpaid. It was through the desert and, and rocky and so forth. And uh, so probably what a lot of people don't realize is how close it was. I was eight minutes behind uh, going into the last day. It was ran in segments, uh, you know, six days. And I was eight minutes behind, and, uh, and of course, what a lot of the older guys didn't realize, I was only 22, but I had a lot of experience up to that time. And I really drove my heart out that last day, and I gained the eight minutes back, back and finished 76 seconds ahead. Of course, while I was in Mexico, I met Bill France Sr., and uh, Curtis Turner and him were down there in the, in the Nash, and we got pretty well acquainted and, uh, you know, during the, the week or 10 days that we spent down there. And he invited me to come back because they were in the process of building the, that, what would be NASCAR's first super speedway. So I took him up on it and uh, I drove the same car. Of course, we had been back in Portland. I drove the car down to the Southern 500 and uh, took the headlights out and had a few spare tires and entered the race and uh, finished ninth and uh, put the headlights back in and drove it back to Portland. But I hit quite a few races, and up to the 1954 season, uh, he called me up because it was a team back there. I had a, an owner that had two cars, and uh, it was mid-season, and they asked me uh, if I wanted to come back and drive. Bill had a single-engine airplane, and he would pick me up after the races, sometimes take me into the city two or three days ahead. And while we were flying from one place to the other, he would have maps strung out all across the windshield of the airplane, and he'd expect me to steer the airplane on course and always get chew on me a little bit because if I was wobbling back and forth, that was before I learned to be a pilot myself. But he, he had the instincts to look into the future uh, many years ahead of his time. And uh, the man had a lot of talent and uh, I appreciated that. And I think he appreciated the talent I had because he, I had the kind of representation uh, to dress up. You know, in them days, everybody wore dirty, greasy coveralls because a lot of the guys that drove worked on the cars, there was no uniforms. Television had just started back there. In fact, in Portland, we didn't have television yet. So I would go on television interviews and radio interviews, and, and I know, I think, that he thought I represented what he wanted NASCAR to represent. Herschel's love of NASCAR stock car racing culminated in the 1986 Winston West Championship, not to mention 12 times as most popular driver of the series, and the 1991 NASCAR Award of Excellence presented by Bill France, Jr. He raced at Le Mans in a Winston Cup car and explored down under at Calder Park. But his most favorite moment, a Texas shootout. Well, I had not run the Texas 500 for 20 years. I had been there 20 or 21 years previously, and I think I'd finished fifth in the Winston Cup race. And so the start of the race, I was, uh, you know, kind of, I was started seventh race. It was kind of dragging back there until I got used to it. But it was quite a thrill to get up alongside Dale with my front fender, and when he got up where he could see the number, I often thought at the time, I wonder what he's thinking about this guy that he says is older than dirt. He's called me that a couple of times. Afterwards, uh, he just, uh, he told me, he says, I just hope I'm as good as you are someday. Now you're supposed to ask me, are you sure he said that? <laughs> and I'm gonna say, it's his word against mine. <laughs> Although McGriff passed on trying Indy cars mostly for safety reasons, he gave the Speedway a shot at the inaugural Brickyard 400 
had he made it, Dick Simons in the age record would have been history. Well, I was fortunate to have the opportunity to go. A friend of mine bought a car from the Woods Brothers and had a great car, but unfortunately we didn't have uh, the time to test. And uh, of course, 40 cars went home and I was one of them, but uh, it, was, it was quite a thing for me to be able to be there. And unfortunately, I didn't go fast enough because you, you just needed a lot of practice uh, to get the speeds up there going. And uh, not, ha not being able to drive every week like them boys do, you gotta, you know, you gotta keep in shape. Well, I would like to keep on for a few years yet. Uh, Health-wise, I'm in good shape, and uh, I try to take care of myself. And uh, but, like I say, at my age, it's a little hard to to pick up sponsors. But uh, I feel that there's a sponsor out there that will fit with the abilities that I have. And uh, so I figure I'm keeping on, keeping going for a while. I'm only 67. I won't be 68 for a couple months. So I got a few years left. Well, in, in the race Sunday, which will be 50 years, my mom was there in the grandstand, and uh, my mother will be 93 December the 9th, so I just might take her to the race Sunday so she can sit there 50 years later and watch me run. I think that would be a thrill. <laughs>